Hello everyone, this is Com Science for you. I'm sure you might have come across Map and For Each while working with JavaScript if you have ever worked with arrays. But there are some minute details about these two functions that we tend to miss out. Let's try to brush our basics with the help of this video. Understanding the working of For Each is simple. It is a function defined on the array.prototype and hence is available to all JavaScript arrays. If you do not understand how the prototype chain works, subscribe to this channel as we are working on a video on JavaScript object basics. Coming back to for each, it is a function that we can call on any array object. It takes in another function as an input. When for each is called on an array, JavaScript takes the array items one by one and calls that function for each of them. Most of us do not pay attention to this part but JavaScript also passes the index of that array item and also the original array when it calls the function for each item. Though most of the times we are only interested in the value of the item. The function executes for each item and then finally undefined is returned to the caller. That's all about it. In this example we are trying to call the for each function and we passed it a log array function. The log array function does nothing but log the value of each of the array element for which it is making use of the element and the index value passed to it. Notice that when the for each loop completes running, the new array variable gets the value undefined as that is what for each returns every time it runs. Here are some of the things that we need to keep in mind while dealing with for each loops. The first thing is that by default if we try to see what the this variable points to inside the function passed to for each it is always undefined. If we want the this variable to point to some other value, we can pass that as the second argument after the function. The range of the loop is decided before the first iteration of the for each. So appending any new elements to the array after the first iteration has gone through doesn't mean it will run for that newly added element. If an array item for a particular index gets deleted, for each skips the execution of that function for that index, unlike a normal for loop which executes it for all the indices. And no matter what we return from inside of the function, for each always returns an undefined to the caller. Let us now dig into the map function which is similar to the for each and exists on the array.prototype as well. A function is passed to map which will then be called for each and every item of the array. The item, index and the original array will be passed to the function on each of its invocation. The only difference is that map returns us a new array which consists of values that are returned as a result of execution of the function for each of the array items. Let's understand the map function with this example. Here we call it on this array of numbers and pass a double function to it. As a result of execution of the function for each array item, we get the output log very similar to for each but at the end we also get returned a new array which consists of the values returned on each iteration of the function. As you can see we returned the double of the element from the function every time thus the new array consists of the doubled values of the corresponding array items. Map behaves similar to for each in several aspects. The this context variable can be passed very similar to for each. Even the range of execution is decided before the first iteration exactly like for each. The main difference is we return an array of items back to the caller. Do note that when nothing is explicitly returned in case of a particular item, the resultant index has an undefined value in the new array. Also, a new array gets returned every single time, unlike for each which returns undefined always. That was a quick revisit to map and for each concepts which we use on a day to day basis in JavaScript programming. Understanding how these are functioning at a core level is important to predict how they would behave in unusual situations. For instance, take this piece of code. If you have understood the concepts in this video properly, let us know what would the value of new ir be after the execution of this piece of code. It's a tricky one, give it a shot. Like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to our channel for more such content. Check out our other awesome videos and suggest us more topics for our future videos in the comment section. We love to hear from you. See you in the next video. Until then, keep learning.